hey everyone welcome back to our channel so firstly uh, on behalf of the entire data back team we are really sorry that uh, we we understand that it's been quite some time that we were not able to upload any video uh, to this channel uh, due to some personal issues but uh, we have a good news for you that from now on there's going to be a continuous uninterrupted flow of videos coming into this adf series so without any further ado let's get started so in the previous video uh, we discussed about uh, triggers and various types of triggers how you can schedule them you know uh, theoretical and technical part so in this video we are going to discuss about data flow so what is data flow i mean slash mapping data flow so what is data flow or mapping data flow and how it is used what are the various components within data flow what are the various use cases both theory and practical uh, we will look into this video and without any further ado let's get uh, started so this is a uh, adf part 7 mapping data flows so first let's try to understand what is mapping data flow so mapping data flows are visually designed data transformations so you know what are data transformations right so when you have an input source then you need to do some transformations on top of that and then send it to the output so here mapping data flows are visually designed data transformations uh, in azure a data factory i think this is very important to uh, acknowledge or understand the data transformations are being done using data flows in adf so this data flow allows data engineers to develop data transformation logic without writing code so the other way of doing this would be writing some sql queries or using python or you know pandas library to implement data transformations in a complex manner but you also have an out-of-box solution here within adf where you can just drag and drop them and use them according to your use case so don't worry about that i'll show you that in the portal you know where it is and how to use that and what are the different you know configuration parameters you have to use this don't worry about that so the, the resulting data flows are executed as activities so activities within azure data factory so don't look at me surprised when i say activities slash pipelines because these are some things which we've already covered in the previous videos so if you're new to this video i would suggest or recommend you to look into the previous videos on activities and pipelines so that you get better understanding when i whenever i say activities or pipelines so the data flows within adf the data flow within adf is an activity so uh, in, in the activity section we have discussed that you have various activities where you can drag and drop them and then use them for building your data engineering pipeline right so data flow would be one of the activity within that list we'll also see that in the portal and then mapping data flows provide an entirely visual experience with no coding uh, required and your data flows run on adf managed execution clusters so usually when you build these data flows they need to run on some processing unit so it's going to be adf managed cluster so you don't have to worry about this this is all the background stuff uh, but but this is uh, no good to know information and uh, I think this would be a little bit important. Azure Data Factory handles all the code translation, path optimization, and execution of your data flow jobs. And then you have various uh, data types within data flow. I think that's the list which I've put it on the screen, but it's not really important to like, you know, by heart these lists. So I think whenever you use data flow, you need to assign a data type to that. It also depends on the input data set which you are fetching in the flow. But uh, this is the list. Uh, we have within the uh, data flow as data types and then data flow activity like i mentioned in uh, earlier that you know this data flow is used as an activity this data flow is being acted as an activity right so mapping data flows are operationalized within adf pipelines using data flow activities so how to create a data flow or how to use it it will be via activity so all a user has to do is specify which integration runtime to use and pass in parameter values again don't look at me surprised when i say integration runtime so ir this is something we also discussed in the previous uh, videos so again if you're new i would recommend you to go and look into integration runtimes various types of integration runtimes and when to use which ir runtime so yeah i think uh, maybe i think this is a good time uh, for us to focus on the portal so if you remember data bag dash data factory 2 this is something we have created in the past like a data factory instance right and we've also built a demo pipeline like using copy activity and we have created two data sets so we're gonna continue with the same data factory instance with the data flow as well so this is how the 
the user interface gonna be uh, with azure data factory if you're new to adf and then you have various components on the left side i won't go in detail about them right now so once you click on this author uh, that that is where you can see a list of a uh, few things which is pipelines data sets data flows and query power query okay so here you can already see a data flow section right and you see it's a zero which means that we don't have any data flows created yet so what we can do is we can click on this and create a new data flow so this is one way of creating a data flow and the other thing which i was explaining you how to use them in your pipeline right so when we discuss about uh, pipelines and activities there is a hierarchy of flow you need to create a pipeline so let's say you have created your data sets you have created your data flows but then you need to use them or then you need to embed them in a pipeline and then you can add trigger on top of that don't worry if this is all confusing right now i'll make things clear and easy for you but for now what you need to understand is so these are like the four lists you have and uh, we've already seen the pipelines and we've created data sets like i mentioned so then you have a section of data flows so uh, i'll quickly show you how you can uh, create a new data flow so you just click on those three dots and then if you click on new data flow then you get this window uh, let me minimize the screen so that you have more space here and then uh, for instance so you have this uh, console once you click on a new data flow it's gonna you know pop up a new console on the left side so here you can see uh, that the properties window uh, where you can add the name of the data flow let's say uh, df stands for data flow underscore uh, demo uh, let's try to do that and then in the description you can mention what this data flow is meant for i mean what is it's used for and then uh, yeah i think that's it uh, so this is basically the general information and if you click on this then this is gone and then you have like a more space here on the console where you can drag and drop and you know uh, do much of an experimentation on creating your data transformation so on the first thing you can also see there is a data flow debug i think i already have a slide for that so when it comes then we will discuss about that but in this what you need to do is if you click on this drop down then you have like two options right so let's not worry about add flowlet right now so just focus on add source so your data transformations always begin with the source and they end with the uh, sync so here the sync means destination so you have a source and then you have a destination and then you build data transformation in between like you know your logic right so uh, so once you click on that then you have the source window let me pull it up and then you have few options here right you have source settings I think there are a few configuration uh, configurations which you need to uh, put in here and then you have source options projection optimize inspect and data preview so don't worry about these uh, options right now uh, let's let's take one step at a time right so let's don't get overwhelmed with all this you know uh, options which you see on the screen so for now what you need to understand is you have a data flow and to create a new data flow you need to click on those three dots and click on create new data flow and then this pops up in a new console and then you select a source because the data flow always starts with a source right so basically this is how the data flow is gonna look so let me uh, show you how this data flow can be used as an activity in the data pipeline because in this video we're not going to uh, uh, create any data flow per se but we are going to see what is data flow and how it is used in the activity and then in the coming videos we're going to do like you know deep level discussion about various aspects when i say various aspects if you click on this plus sign here so then you have a big list of uh, you know uh, items or components here so you have join you have a conditional split and then like i said you have a very big list right so basically you have each component or you have various components for each activity or maybe don't get confused when i say activity i'm speaking about a data transformation activity you're gonna do here let's say you have two different sources and you want to join them like you know if you're from like database background you know when i say join i meant like when you have two different tables in the database then you want it to join them so that join on a unique key right and so that you see the common attributes when you join those two tables which you can use further on your analysis so usually what we do is we we write our sql queries for that right but but here adf within adf in the data flow we have out of box uh, solution which is join then you have split so you have derived you have select you have aggregate you have various uh, components like i mentioned but like i said don't worry each and every component we will do a deep discussion on that and we will make a very small examples and build them and then see how they work okay so uh, for example if you click on join then you have this join and then you can add additional data transformation or you can also end it with a sync for example let's say you have uh, two different sources then you wanted to like you know uh, 
join it so here uh, if you click on this join right so you can also mention like what is the left join and then what is the right join then you already have this uh, visually represented connection right so this is a very high level information about uh, data flow so sometimes this is also addressed as mapping data flow so don't get confused if someone says oh let's try to implement that using mapping data flow yeah it's it's data flow they're talking about and then let's say this is the df uh, underscore demo this is a data um, a flow and uh, let me try to I don't think I can save this, but what I wanted to show is if you click on three dots on this pipeline, create a new pipeline, right? Then you have a list of activities. We discussed again. Don't look at me surprised. And then if you search on this activity with a name called data flow or with a name called data, you can already see a data flow activity coming here. Maybe I can just round it up so you can see here. So this is data flow. So you can also do is if you drop if you click on this arrow it will be it will expand move and transform and then you can already see the data flow so the data flow activity is within move and transform uh, category or section so what you can do is you can just drag and drag and drop them similar to how we did uh, with the copy activity let me close these uh, items right and uh, this would be a new pipeline right then you can give the pipeline name here for example pipeline underscore uh, demo one again and then uh, you can also give the description here on the left side and then you see there are a few components here if i uh, hover my mouse then you see on scape on success uh, on fail and then on completion so if you click on this data flow then you have a few con a few configuration you know uh, parameters which you need to set on the below deck you have general information which is like the name of the data flow and then the description okay don't don't get uh, confused or don't get uh, you know um, overwhelmed again so we will discuss them uh, in detail then you have settings so this is where you're going to select which data flow you want to use in this pipeline maybe uh, there could be a data flow as one of the activity in in your entire pipeline right or maybe data, you, you just wanted to create a data flow and you want to run that data flow. So you build your data flow in the data flow section and then you use this data flow as an activity in the pipeline and then you select that data flow here. Let's say a df underscore demo, right? And then you also configure all the integration runtime where you want to execute this and then you save this and then you add trigger on that so that it will be scheduled every day to run that data transformation which you have built in the data flow. So usually this is how you create a data flow and then how you use that in the pipeline and then add triggers on top of that. So uh, that is what I meant of uh, data flow activity uh, which I showed you just now. And then you have a debug mode uh, within uh, the data flow as well so what is debug mode here means is uh, let's say you are building your data transformations right so you have two sources and then you have added a join and then you have added an aggregate step right let's call them steps so now you wanted to see how your data already looks here without even like you know adding your sync and then executing the whole flow because you just don't want to waste all your time in like building everything and at the end you see the result oh then you realize no this is not what we want right so here data flow also gives you an additional component called debug mode which allows you to already interactively see the data or the outcome or the output of each and every step right so you start with the source then you can already see the preview and then you add a join and then you can already see a preview and then you can add aggregate and then you can already see a preview so basically debug mode is used to preview your data without you know already um develop uh, without already uh, developing your whole uh, data transformation solution so uh, debug mode allows you to interactively see the results of each transformation step while you build and debug your data flows. The debug session can be used both in while building your data flow logic and running pipeline debug runs with data flow activities. So again, guys, so when I say debug mode, it has to run, right? So you also need to configure the integration runtime. So for instance, if I want to go to, uh, let me uh, expand this and open the data flow, uh, then you can see you have a data flow debug and then you have a data preview. So this is basically what I was talking about. So each for each uh, transformation step, you have a data preview. For each transformation step, you have a data preview. So this basically, this is what we were talking about. Uh, previewing the data without accomplishing or without completing the whole data flow transformation. So to, to do this, you, you can already see that here it says that you need to 
please turn on the debug mode and wait until the cluster is ready to preview the data. So what is happening in the back end? So what is happening here is, so once you select an integration runtime, right? Once you click on the data debug, let's try to click or enable this. If you click on that, it will ask you to select the integration runtime where you want to execute this processing or transformation or where you want to run this data, right? So the data is already stored somewhere. Let's say the data is stored in some SQL database, Azure SQL database, that is your source. Now you have joined uh, two tables and now you wanted to preview the join step, transformation step. So basically it has to join this, right? There is some compute which is happening in the back end. So this usually needs to run on some processing unit. So it needs some clusters in the back end. So here it asks us to select the integration runtime. So by default, you have auto resolve IR and uh, in the integration uh, session, we also discussed various types as well. So you can also create your self hosted uh, integration runtime. So you have uh, Azure integration runtime as well. So you basically can select one and then you can also say time to live. So uh, when you are enabling an IR, basically you are saying uh, to ADF that certain uh, clusters or the processing units, the computing unit needs to be prepared for me. So you also need to define like for how long you want it to be enabled for you, right? Because at the end of the day, everything is costing here, right? So let's say I just want it for one hour. And then you also can select the region and the compute size and all while creating integration runtime and then basically you select that. So it kind of takes some time for this data flow debug to be like, you know, preparing the cluster and enabling and all that stuff. Maybe like, a oh, that was quick. You can already see that. So once this is enabled, then uh, you can already preview the data. So currently it has some invalid because we haven't selected any sources or anything. That's the reason it says this. But don't worry, in the coming lectures, we will... Uh, discuss more on this uh, source and all the different transformation steps. I hope uh, this is uh, clear and uh, that is how you use the debug mode. And then you also have monitoring data flows, right? Uh, so within ADF, you also have a monitoring component. We also have a managed component. So mapping data flow integrates with existing Azure Data Factory monitoring capabilities. So you have a monitoring capability for pipeline runs. You can see them. At the same time, you also have a monitoring capability for your data flows. So the Azure Data Factory team has created a performance tuning guide to help you optimize the execution time of your data flows after building your business logic. So basically you have this monitoring part where you can see that and see, okay, let's say my data flow is running for like, you know, an hour or more and I just wanted to tune it and then improve the performance. So you also have these kind of capabilities as well. So if I quickly look that, so uh, if you expand this, then you have like a few options here within that. If you click on monitor, then you can already see that. Uh, there are pipeline runs uh, which you can uh, monitor here. Of course, you need to select the time uh, from which you wanted to see uh, these things and you also have a debug option here, but this is mainly about pipeline runs. So then you have trigger runs and then you have integration runtime and this is where you have data flow debug. So you can already see that the data flow debug uh, thing which we have added, you can already see that it's been added to this list. Right, so you can also see that the time out because we have used one hour as time to live, and it, it is so intelligent that it gives us that still 58 minute, 58 minutes are uh, remaining uh, before this cluster gets disabled for you, right? And then you can see already uh, various components as well. So yeah, so I think once we have uh, the list of runs, you can already see them here. But usually this section also provides you uh, about the, the monitoring capability on your uh, data flow. Uh, don't, don't, don't get confused. Like I mentioned, this is a very high level video for you to understand what is data flow, where it is used and how it is used. And then we will get into deeper uh, sessions or uh, uh, discussions in the upcoming videos. And uh, yeah, let me go back to my slide. So this is about monitoring data flows and I think uh, that is it for this video because I just wanted to keep it very short because the lengthy videos might not be really, you know, focusing or really interesting for you to, you know, uh, follow through the whole video. And uh, I would request guys, please subscribe to our channel and follow us in the LinkedIn page as well with uh, databag.ai. And if you can also, if you also want to follow me, you can also follow me in the LinkedIn with Vinod Kumar Bovi. And then you can also follow me so that, you know, I, uh, 
uh, also post some updates there and uh, thank you so much uh, and uh, see you in the next video good day